Hi, it's Matt. I'm back with another 7 by 10 inch transparent watercolor. I'm taking a little break from the birds right now and thought I would do a painting of this reckless jumping spider. I got photo reference from this guy that I found in the backyard. After transferring the sketch to the paper and frisketing off the foreground, I did a straightforward gradient on dry paper of several greens that were pre-mixed. And then I loaded on a second wash of that color and then spritzed it with some water to get intentional back runs, kind of get that speckly pattern. While the paper was still wet, I sprinkled in with the toothbrush some more dark greens, hoping that those would run around, and then I hit it with the hair dryer to set it up. Wanting to have that background really go dark at the edge of the where the leaf will be, I started spattering in some dark blacky greens with a toothbrush. And I blotted some of them off that they were where I didn't really want them. Once I was happy with the background, I hit it with the hairdryer again and then peeled off the frisket and transferred over the sketch for the foreground. Well, as usual, the best thing to do at this point is cover as much of the white of the paper as possible. So I did that just using, a, I think most of this was a number six round brush. As I worked on the painting, the spider has some kind of rich, warm, orangey browns on it. And in order to have that play well with the rest of the painting, I wanted to bring in some of those orangey yellows to the leaf. And the actual photo reference, it went maybe a little bit kind of tannish on the edges of the, the leaf that the spider was on. But I, I kind of played that up and made them a really rich, orangey orangey yellow and maybe even red at the very tips eventually and this would help bring in those warm colors from the spider later while doing the composition i often will uh for doing macro shots i'll often have a blurry background and in this one I, when I did it, I wanted to have it a little bit more lively and active, so I chose to do this spattery background to make it a little more lively. You can see in the photo reference above the painting that it really was just this perfect lime green kind of background. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit more energetic, especially because it has this, with the way the leaf was coming over, I thought it looked like a crashing wave almost. And I thought that if I had the plain plain background up top it might look a little uh i don't know a little sedate or a little boring and i wanted to add, kind of punch up the drama of this guy sneaking up the edge of the the leaf um these jumping spiders don't spin webs to catch their food they they act more like a cat and they sneak up on it and then they pounce on it and so they will often have kind of a if you watch them in the field, you'll see them kind of creeping around and sneaking over the edges of things, trying to sneak up on insects that they're going to eat. So I thought that by having that, uh, it would build the drama if I had a, a little bit more active background and foreground for the painting, make it a little more energetic. For the back, for the leaf, I did mostly uh, number six round brush, but for the detail on the spider, I was usually mo using mostly a number two round. And as usual, this is done the way the way I approach these is many, many layers um, put on top of each other builds a, a convincing texture of that, that furry, uh, furry spider. And you can see my photo reference on the left that I took 
Um, they have kind of these dark brows on them, and they kind of, I don't know, I, I, I always call them the grumpy jumpers rather than the reckless jumping spider, but because they look kind of pouty or grumpy. Um, I don't think they really look sinister per se, uh, because they, they have those big goggle eyes, which kind of make them somewhat endearing, at least in my opinion. But they do have the, uh, the way the black goes over the eyes does make them look a little grumpy. For the shadows on the underside of the leaf, I was using a lot of uh, phthalo blue and dioxazine purple. I could have gone with uh, a little bit less colorful shadow area, but I thought that would make it look a little bit more um, lively. And uh, that contrast on the of the oranges to those purpley blues would be kind of neat. So at this point I was pretty much just picking out little details and polishing up edges and um, eventually I took out, here I am with a, that's a crow quill pen rather than a brush to do some of the really tiny hairs on the spider. Those give me good control. So I just finished wrapping things up at this point and signed it and called it a day. So there it is, that's a 7x10 inch transparent watercolor of a reckless jumping spider. Thanks for having a peek. If you get a chance, take a look at the blog and the website.